right, so here's this lesson on parabolas. I know what you're thinking, parabolas. We've already talked about parabolas. But we're going to look at parabolas as part of this unit on conic sections. Conic sections, think of a cone. Think of slicing that cone with something really sharp. And it makes a two-dimensional shape. One of those is a parabola. So objective one, we're going to define a parabola as a conic section and as this thing called a locus. Not a bug, a locus, not locust. Anyway, and uh, we've got some parts there. We've got vertex, which you're familiar with, and these two other parts that you probably never heard of, focus and directrix. One of them's a point, one of them's a line. Uh, objective two, going to be able to write the equation of the parabola in standard form. Standard form is not y equals ax squared plus bx plus c like you're used to. This is a totally different standard. It's like a double standard. And then finally, number three, graph that equation, putting it all together, graph that equation when it's in standard form. Make that graph of a parabola. Okay, so before when we were doing parabolas, remember we had just, uh, we had beards and we had mustaches, but here now we're going to have sideways parabolas. So it's a whole new thing, a whole new world is opening up to us. So, uh, and this little warm up, it's just something from geometry. So in geometry, when you take a solid shape, a three-dimensional shape, and you cut it with a plane. So just look at those three pictures right there. You're slicing it with a plane. It leaves a two-dimensional shape on that plane. That shape is called a section. Now in science class, you're used to probably drawing cross-sections of cells, things like that. Um, a cross-section in geometry is a section that's just made parallel to the base. So look at the first one here. You've got a cube and you've got the plane that's going parallel to the base. What shape is going to be left on that plane? What two-dimensional shape is going to be left on the plane? Of course, it is a square. And this one is a cross-section, okay, because it's parallel to the base, the plane is. All right, look at the, uh, the, the cylinder that's right there in the middle, and it's cut perpendicular to the base. It's going to trace out, that's right, a rectangle. So we've got a rectangle in the middle. Rectangle. Is this one a, uh, a cross-section? Nah. If it was a cross-section, it would be parallel to the base, and it would make a circle. Uh, and finally, let's look at the cone. Take a section of that cone. Cone, section, of the conic section. Anyway. Um, what shape is going to be left on that plane? What two-dimensional shape? It's going to be a triangle. And this one is also not a cross-section because it's not made parallel to the base. Okay. So, now, um, instead of taking just a single cone, well, what we're going to do is we're going to put a cone on top of a cone. It's called a double-napped cone, or just double cone for short. Okay. And uh, so, vocabulary-wise, each one of the cones is called a nap, N-A-P-P-E, nap. You've got an upper nap, you got a lower nap, okay? The point where they join right there in the middle, the point that they have in common is called the vertex of that double nap cone. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that double cone, and we're going to slice it up in a whole bunch of different ways and make some grass that, well, some of them you've seen before, but maybe some of them are going to be completely fresh. Before I do, let me show you something on Microsoft, Word, uh, Microsoft Mathematics 4, which is a free PC piece of software that you could download for free and then uh, type in this equation so that you can get yourself a double nap cone. And you can twirl it around and make it look real cool. So let's take a second and look at that. So this is a program called Microsoft Mathematics 4. If you just Google it, you will find it. If you have a PC, you can download it for free, put it on your computer, as long as your mom and dad said it's okay. Um, if you have a Macintosh computer, the graphing program that comes with the, the operating system already does 3D graphs. And it's a little bit nicer than this, actually, because you can actually record a video from that. And, you know, I would be putting that in my, my video, but I don't have a Mac. So this is what I have. Anyway, so what you want to do whenever this thing pulls open is you want to go over to the graphing tab, okay? And right here underneath equations and functions, if you can see this, it says 2D and Cartesian. We're going to change that 2D 
to a 3D. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in an equation. I just clicked on the number one little box, and I'm going to type in this equation. I'm going to type in x squared, so I just use the little caret for the uh, 2, plus y squared, uh, y squared is equal to z squared. And, and it kind of looks like the Pythagorean theorem with x's, y's, and z's. When I hit enter on this, it doesn't do anything until I come down to the bottom of this. See this little button that says graph. I hit graph, and there it is. Now, uh, just to make this look proportional, you can see this little button right up here. It says proportional display. If you click on that, now it looks our, like our double napped cone that we saw in the presentation. And the cool thing about this is that I can uh, rotate this thing around, and I can see what this thing is going to look like from all different angles. Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? Okay, so I'll let you play around and experiment with that as you wish. All right, now let's take that double nap cone and let's slice it up. Okay, so the first way we're going to slice this is take a plane and we're going to make it parallel to the base. Base, well, we're, we're talking about like one of those circular things because these things are supposed to go on and forever. So goes uh, up forever, goes down forever. But just think of it being parallel to one of those circulars, circular bases. And what shape is it going to make? Mm, I'm not going to tell you. You just think about that for a second. How about number two? Take a look at number two. Same plane that was before, so it was parallel to the base, but now let's just tilt it a little bit. What shape is that one going to make? Hmm. Okay. Number three, what about we take the plane and we make it parallel to one of the lateral edges? So uh, we're talking about we, we slice it like this. What, what's that going to look like? When we slice it like that, what is that two-dimensional shape going to look like? And then finally, number four, what if we slice that thing perpendicular to the base? So come back here with the eraser, take this one off. Like I slice it perpendicular and it hits both of the cones. What is that shape going to look like? So let's take a look at this on Geometry Sketchpad and let's see all of these different things, which are called conic sections. So let me start by saying I did not make this sketch. Whoever did make it deserves all the credit. It's pretty awesome. So over here on the left hand side, you have yourself a, a double map cone and the yellow thing is a plane that is passing through that cone and I am able to tilt the plane in different directions and right now it's tilted so that it's parallel to one of the bases and when it's parallel to one of the bases the shape that I get is a circle that's the conic section that's left on the, the two-dimensional thing that's left on the plane so let me tilt this a little bit so it's not completely parallel and now I'm taking a circle and I'm kind of crunching it, right? I'm stretching it out a little bit. So it's not a circle. Some people call that an oval, but what we call it is an ellipse. It's an ellipse. Now, let me keep tilting it. So you can see that it definitely looks more, more like an ellipse. Now, once I get it to be parallel to this lateral surface over here, then the shape that I get, you can see it trace out over here on the double cone, the shape that I get is a, a parabola. And that's what today's lesson is about, that conic section of parabola. So the tilt of the plane is parallel to this lateral edge that's over here. So let me keep tilting it until I get it perpendicular. So that's pretty good, perpendicular. And it looks like it makes a, a parabola up top and a parabola down here in the bottom. But these don't have exactly the same shape as a parabola. This is called a hyperboloid. And you have, uh, it's exactly reflected on the top and the bottom right there. And you can see it play out over here on the double cone. So uh, just keep rotating this around just because it's pretty sweet. And you can see this thing go from a hyperbola to a circle, an ellipse, to a parabola, and on and on and so on. All right, let's get back to that slideshow. Okay, so objective one here we're going to be able to define a parabola as a conic section and as a locus. A locus, you'll see, is just a collection of points that all have some in common. And then be able to find its parts, like its vertex, its focus, and its directrix. So as we just saw just a little bit ago, we could take a cone, and if we slice that thing 
parallel to one of its lateral edges, we get this shape. We get like that water, that, the trajectory of that water. It makes a parabola. So here are the four conic sections, the four basic conic sections, the ones that we're going to be talking about in this unit. So from the previous descriptions, we have a plane that cuts parallel to one of the bases. It makes a circle. If I take that plane and I tilt it just a little bit, it's not completely a circle anymore. It's kind of elongated, which we call an ellipse. Now, if I make my plane parallel to one of the lateral edges, it traces out our familiar parabola shape. And then finally, if I make my cut perpendicular to both of the bases, it makes a, a hyperbola. Hyperbola almost looks like two parabolas, one going up, one going down, um, but they're not. Like the shapes of them are not exactly the same. You're going to see that in uh, a set of challenge problems at the end of this unit. Something to look forward to. Okay, so uh, the Greeks were the first ones to talk about these conic sections. And then um, sometime around the 1500s, around the Renaissance, around uh, Rene Descartes, they took those things, the conic sections, which were just about shapes, three-dimensional shapes and slicing them with planes and put them on a graph so that we made an equation. We graphed the equation. That's what analytic geometry is all about. So every single one of these conic sections can be described by this general quadratic equation. Notice, like, we, we're so used to only seeing an x squared. But look at this. We have an x squared and a y squared. C B, uh, CX plus DY plus E. All this equals zero. There's the general one. And we're going to see that with a whole bunch of different numbers in it. And just by looking at it, we'll be able to go, hey, that one's a parabola. Hey, that one's a circle. That one's an ellipse, just by looking at it. So if you take a look at the pictures that are here, um, the one over here on the right is very nice. It has just a single cone, just tilting that plane just enough so that you can see all the different kinds of conic sections. Okay. And then over here on the cup, if you take a cup and you just extend it forever, or extend it until it meets down on the bottom, it would make a cone. Of course, we chop off the bottom so we could set that thing on the table and it doesn't spill. So of course, the top of that thing makes a circle. We have a hyperbola if we cut it perpendicular to the base. I don't know why this parabola is over here. This is a picture I got off the internet. I think the parabola should have been it's one of these two. I, I suppose I guess it was this one. And then ellipse if I make it not quite parallel to one of the circular bases. Okay. There are a couple of other kinds of conic sections, but the ones that people usually don't care about too much, they're called degenerate conic sections. Degenerate is a word that means pretty much less than normal. And so all the other conic sections, the plane, whenever it cut through or sliced or double cone, that plane couldn't go through the vertex. If it does go through the vertex, you have these three kind of really plain and boring conic sections. Like, we can have just a point if it intersects just the vertex, intersects both of the lateral edges, it just makes a line. Or if it's perpendicular to both of the bases and it goes through the vertex, it just makes an X, two intersecting lines. It's kind of boring. But anyway, there's a couple more conic sections. Now let's look at some applications of this first one that we're talking about. We're talking about parabolas. And we knew from uh, talking about parabolas before that the trajectories of things, when things get thrown or launched, they trace out a parabola. So that's when Galileo discovered trajectories of launch objects follow parabolic shapes. So there's one of the applications. So we've seen this picture before, a bouncing ball. It's going to trace out a parabola. Um, here's another cool one. Now, we don't usually think of a parabolic orbit, but it is such a thing. So in this picture, uh, of course, our planet, like the Earth, would travel around the sun in the shape of an ellipse. If you didn't know that, that's what it is. OK. And uh, we have like comets that might come, like go around the sun. And the ellipses just really, really stretch out really, really big. And we only ever see them a couple hundred years. But it's possible that maybe a comet sh uh, flies along a parabolic orbit. Would we ever see that thing again? No, we'd see it once and never ever see it again because it would just keep on going out. So the orbits are sometimes parabolic celestial bodies. Okay, And here's another one. This one is if you drive a car, if you use a flashlight, 
um, if you have DISH or satellite TV at home, you have one of these, but you probably didn't even know it. It's called a parabolic reflector. Parabolic reflector, the cross section of it, shapes, is a, a parabola. And what happens is, if this is a receiver right here, this is, let's say, a, a satellite, um, some radio waves would come into the satellite, they would reflect off the surface, and they would all focus right there um, at the antenna pickup. And you, that's why on antennas you sometimes see these little, these little uh, legs sticking out, and that's where it's receiving it, and it's at the focus. That's one of our vocabulary words that we'll see. Okay. And then on the opposite direction, if it's like a headlight or if it's a flashlight, the focus is where the beam of light would be and the light would just shine everywhere and any, any light that hits the actual parabolic reflector is reflected parallel to, parallel to the axis of symmetry right here that goes right to the fo focus. And that's why you get a nice, a nice fat, strong light beam whenever you use a flashlight. Okay, so uh, I think that's that's going to about wrap up this first video. When we come back, we're going to actually look at parabola as a conic section and as a locus.